Tasha Allah, Seven Shalom. Um, last week we touched on were the commandments done away with. Um, last week's title to the lesson was commandments to do or not to do. Um, through scripture, the, we are um, told to prove all things. So uh, after going through scriptures, I did exactly that. Thus said the Most High. Um, we touched on some scriptures that lay to rest all beliefs um, of that the laws were done away with, um, that Yahweh Shai, um, his crucifixion, uh, put an end to the way of law, the way that we at that time and today would presently view it. But um, through scripture, we laid that one to rest. He is maggot food and fertilized at this time. Um, today, a lot of our people who are presently not in the truth as far as a bunch of us um, already full grown bruised um, would still say, but he said to fulfill. So today's title is Fulfill What? Again, the topic is Fulfill What? So we fulfill, going to show you what through the scriptures that he fulfilled. Um, I'm going to point out all the prophecies from the Old Testament being that Matthew is the first book um, of the New Testament. And in Matthew... Um, He five and six seventeen. He stated that um, he he didn't come to change the law, but he fulfilled that thing. So through scripture again, we're gonna show you what he improved with the scriptures, what he fulfilled. Thus said the Most High. Today's topic again is fulfill what. So through scripture, we're gonna prove all things. John eight thirty two states what. And ye shall know, know the, the truth, truth, and, and the, the truth, truth shall make you free. free. One more time. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right, let's jump right on in it. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Read it one more time for the listeners who might be their first time viewing or first time they ever might catch one of these videos. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. Uh-huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Things that were written in the Old Testament. Come on. Were written for our learning. They were written for what? Were written for our learning. One more time. Were written for our learning. Come on. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Through patience and comfort of the scriptures means sitting down, taking your time, evaluating what's right from wrong, putting things in category. Come on. Might have hope. We might have what? Might have hope. We can see in uh, this is a GPS system description to find our way and get back in line with the system that's going to lead to that promise of everlasting life. Nehemiah 8 and 8. Come on. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. Come on. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Read it one more time. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. The, 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 the book of God is this Bible. Come on. And gave the sense. What did we do? And gave the sense. What is every Israelite supposed to do? And gave the sense. Not like you three up your uh, Christian churches. They, you go in there, you not knowing nothing and leave out of there not knowing nothing. You haven't gained anything. Come on. And caused them to understand the reading. And what's our job to do as an Israelite? And caused them to understand the reading. We're supposed to cause our people to understand what is going on in this book, man. That is what we are profess to, uh, profess to do. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. Come on. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? This is Paul writing this thing. Come on. Is the law sin? Is God, the what? Is the law sin? Because this is what Christianity did teach you right here. Come on. God forbid. What did the Most High say? God forbid. God forbid means no. Get that through your thick skulls. No, y'all must can't read Paul. Come on. Nay, I had not known sin, 
but by the law. How did he, Paul say he identified sin? I had not known sin, but by the law. He did not know sin if there had not been a law in place. Come on. For I had not known lust. He not known what? Lust. That was his sin. Come on. Except the law had said. Except who? Except the law had said. Thus the most high said what? Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet because I seen big booty Judy and I said, dang, bro, I, I want to lay down with her. The time not come boots off. This is what the scriptures. Paul was an eyeballer. He he was watching folks, man. He was watching the sisters. He he said that he wouldn't know what lust was if it had not been for the scriptures, man. This is this is this is very plain in uh uh uh, uh English. Uh chapter uh, verse twelve. Now jump to the uh, verse twelve from it. The book of Romans, chapter seven and verse twelve. Come on. Wherefore the law is holy. What the what he say? Wherefore the law is holy. The law ain't a curse, man, because that's what you they 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 read Galatians and say, man, you curse if you keep the law. Man, you buffoons, noodles is fried. Come on. And the commandment holy. And what? And the commandment holy. Start from the top one time for me. I Wherefore the law is holy. Come on. And the commandment holy. Come on. And just and good. They just and good, man. Ain't nothing unrighteous about these laws, man. They were set up by the Most High. And they was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Now I jump to Romans chapter 3, verse 31 from it. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Bring that thing. Do we then make void the law through what, faith? What did he say? Do we then make void the law through faith? So do we put a, aside the laws of the Most High through the belief that Yahweh Shah died on the cross and he made that thing better? What did he say? God forbid. What did he say? God forbid. That means no. Read it one more time from the top form. Huh? The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 31. Come on. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do we make void that thing? Put it to the side. I ain't got to do that thing no more. God forbid. What did he say? God forbid. Man, God forbid you be put them laws to the side, because on the day of judgment, man, you're going to get your top knocked off. Yay, we establish the law. What do we do? Yay, we establish the law. Establish mean to hold on, build, or have it, or what, or, or what have you. They did not put behind you. That is what the word establish means. Um, get that out of your noodles, man. So again, we are going to show you through scriptures today because last week we went through uh, where the commandments still stand, whether to do or not to do. We proved through scripture that the commandments are to be presently due. So now we are going through the today to show you what he fulfilled because of a lot of Christianity mindset that is lingers around and our people labeled stiff necks, hard hearted or rebellious people. They are still say, but the scripture says to reveal how you got them over there. They stupid and laugh up under your breath. You're going to be, uh, you're going to be put to death, man, if you don't get that thing. Now let's look at Matthew chapter five, verse 17, the book of Matthew chapter five and verse 17. Come on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. What did he say? Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Read that one more time. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So the Most High, uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, just said what again? Uh, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So where is it that y'all get out of your noodles, man? He said, think not that I have come to destroy the law. Read. Or the prophets. Or who? Or the prophets. Come on. I am not come to destroy. He said what again? I am not come to destroy. He didn't say this twice in the same verse because he wanted you to make sure that you understood that he did not come to destroy. Put aside. Put a shunder behind your back. On the counter shelf, in the trunk of the car, wherever you want to sit the laws, he said, I came not to destroy. Read it from the top one more time for uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Come on. Read the next one. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you. Check out what he say. Till heaven and earth pass. Till heaven and earth pass. Last time I looked, heaven was still up under my feet and over my over my head at the same time. There's three heavens that we reside in, too. We just can't see the third one. Come on. One jot or one tittle. What? Well, say what? One jot. That's a period. Or one tittle. That's a comma. Shall in no wise pass from the law. So he wasn't even talking about the words. 
huh? to all be fulfilled. To all of this book, bound to revelations, be fulfilled. And that has not happened yet. So the, the law that was given to Moses still stands as is. The same way he delivered it to Moses is the, and Moses delivered it until the 12 tribes is the same way that we supposed to honor and keep that thing in 2018 or whatever year it is right now, man. And now, now, read X. Now, read the 17, verse 17, one more time for me. I, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 17. Because I want them to be sure that they get this because we finna go on the prophecies and show you what out of this Bible he fulfilled. Come on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law uh -huh. or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Right. Now we're going to go through these prophecies. There's 20 of them in the book of Matthews. And I'm going to identify and bring them things out to you, bro. And sisters, Akiyams and Akwats, that's what I'm going to do today. And make sure that our people be on the same page at the end of the day. Um, before we do that, let's look at what the scripture said he came to fulfill. Acts 3.18. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. By who? By the mouth of all his prophets. Because he said, I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And he said, not the prophets come on. He's showing you right here what he did, what he came to fulfill. That Christ should suffer. That what? That Christ should suffer. That Hamashiach should suffer. Come on. He has so fulfilled. He fulfilled that part. When they talked about the sufferings that Hamashiach was going to go through, he fulfilled that part for him. Luke chapter 24, verse 44 now. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. That was written where? That which were written in the law of Moses. Come on. And in the prophets and in the Psalms uh -huh. concerning me. So he just labeled basically the Old Testament talking about him. That's what he came to fulfill. And now I'm finna prove that thing out of these scriptures. Isaiah 28 verse 10 right now. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Read that one more time. For precept must be upon precept. We are instructed to read this Bible a certain way. Read it one more time. For precept must be upon precept. Come on. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. Old and, Testament. And there a little. And New Testament or vice versa. Oh, and don't forget to add the Apocrypha in there. It goes as well. Now, because we finna show you precept behind precept. And later rest a bunch of people that said um, the New Testament ain't no good. I'm finna show you how it lines up with the Old Testament. Uh, one and the, the two are in sync together. It ain't nothing that was mentioned in the Old Testament and it was not mentioned in the New Testament. Standing on the same basis and foundation of the Old Testament is what the New Testament is built off of. He said, I came in the volume of the book. That mean from Genesis 1 and 1 to Revelations 22 and 21. Uh, 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 um, that's that's what the scriptures are stating. Uh, if you do anything outside of that, man, you, you might need to go see a doctor, man. Get yourself examined, man, to see if your noodles sitting right they're supposed to, uh, or, or you retarded for real. We need to know that thing. Um, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The book of Isaiah Chapter 7 and verse 14. This is the first one right here. This is the first prophecy. Come on. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Uh-huh. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Uh, his name, let me see where you at. Uh-huh. Okay. Read it one more time for me. I the book of Isaiah, chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring that thing out. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Uh-huh. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. What they gonna call him? Emmanuel. Which is interpreted as God with us. Now, let's go to the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 uh, through 23 now. The book of Matthew, uh -huh. chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Come on. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. 
Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And it came, Shalakia, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Matthews, Matthew chapter one. Right, Matthew chapter one. Matthew chapter one, verse twenty-two and twenty-three. Uh huh. Now all this was done. That's right. That Come it on. might be fulfilled. What's going to be fulfilled? Come which on. Was spoken of by the Lord by the prophet saying. Come on. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is God with us. Uh huh. The brother had them did a remix in that thing, but it's all right. We got that thing right. Read um read Isaiah seven and fourteen now, and then go back and read that. The How book of Isaiah chapter seven verse fourteen. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Uh huh. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, come on. Precept book of that Matthew thing. chapter one. Verses 22 and 23. Come on. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord. What is that key word he said in there? That might be what? That might be fulfilled. That might be what? Fulfilled. Might be what? Fulfilled. Might be what? Fulfilled. Come on. Which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is God with us. That's the first prophecy that the Most High fulfilled that's labeled in the New Testament. Now, let's go to Malachi chapter 5, verse 2. Micah. Micah. Yeah, Micah. My bad, Shalaki. Let's go to Micah. The book of Micah. Right. Chapter 5, verse 2. Come on. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrath, Ephratah, though thou be a though thou be little among the thousands of Judah. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Okay. Now, let's get the uh, 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 back end of that prophecy right there, where it was mentioned in the New Testament. Come on. The book, Matthew. Oh, come on. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 5 through 6. This is the prophecy number 2 that's being fulfilled. Come on. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Read it from the top one more time, verse 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Come on. And they said unto him, uh -huh. In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Uh-huh. That was that was the prophecy number two that is listed in in the in the, about the, the part about he fulfilled. We're gonna go through these scriptures and bring them all out to you this afternoon because we're gonna show you what he fulfilled. He did not fulfill a, a, a sin or, or die for your sinful acts that you can just uh, openly commit sin and it'll be okay at judgment day that is not what he died for but yet this is what the Christian churches are pushing and I here at Judaism of Israel and all the camps all my brethren we are on a mission to destroy that mindset and destroy these temples I don't have to physically destroy them if I, if I spiritually destroy their, 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 their doctrine I have the, nobody gonna go to those buildings they'll be empty shells that, that's my job, man. I don't have to burn them down, man. It's going to come a time for that, but I don't have to do that, man. All I have to do is hold my, my place, man, and spiritually tear down that foundation of what they, we call to be a church, man. That's all witchcraft, in other words, man. Hosea chapter 11, verse 1 now. The book of Hosea chapter 11 and verse 1. Come on. When Israel was a child. When Israel was what? Was a child. Come on. Then I loved him. And called my son out of Egypt. He did. He called who? And called my son out of Egypt. He called us up out of Egypt, man. That was the first Exodus, and we coming upon the second Exodus here in just a little while. We don't know exactly the time frame, but all we can tell our people is, please be ready when that time frame expires. Um, Matthew chapter two, verse fifteen. Now, the book of Matthew chapter two, 
Verse 15. Come on. And there, Shalaki. And was there until the death of Herod, uh -huh. that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. What did he call us from? Out of Egypt have I called my son. So we see the same thing in the Old Testament. We see the same thing in the New Testament. They wanted the same. Why they try to throw away the New Testament and they said it ain't no good? The New Testament was confirmation book. Uh, that, that's what it was. That was the 27 books in the New Testament was for. It was confirmation that our present disciples and people that the Howard shot touch was saying the same thing that our forefathers in the Old Testament stated. That is what the New Testament is talking about. They one and the same. Now, that's the third prophecy. Let's look at prophecy number four, Jeremiah 31 and 15. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15. Come on. Thus saith the Lord. Thus says who? Thus saith the Lord. Thus says Yahweh. A voice was heard in Ramah, uh -huh. lamentation, and bitter weeping. Rael, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children, because they were not. Uh-huh. Read it one more time for him, though. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 15. This is the fourth prophecy that the Yahweh shall fulfill. Come on. Thus saith the Lord. A voice was heard in Ramah. Lamentation and bitter weeping. Meaning they be, it was in a sad state. Lamentations is a sad state. They were weeping, crying, all of that. Come on. Rael, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Matthew chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. To get the New Testament version of prophecy that was being fulfilled. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Uh-huh. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, uh -huh. In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, and will not be comforted because they are not. That is the fourth prophecy that we fulfilling. We're going to show you through these, the uh, thus said the Most High. If the, if the priest speak uh, uh, with, out of his, let him speak with the oracles of God. That's the only way I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to bring what thus said the Most High out because at the end of the day, my own words do not mean nothing. They got to throw them things in the trash. But what the Most High said going to stand forever, man. And that's what I'm going to speak on. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. Let's get the fifth prophecy. Come on. Verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, uh -huh. and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Hold on, read that one more time, slow it down. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. Uh -huh. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Out of who? Of Jesse. That is David's father. So there you go right there. When they always talking about, they still, he said a rod of Jesse. So he telling the, the lineage of Jesus, Yahmashiach, uh, 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 Yahweh back even farther. Come on. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Uh-huh. Come on. Question? Uh-uh. Read uh, the prophecy of Matthews now. Matthew 2, 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 2. Verse 23. Uh-huh. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. And who? And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Okay, so right here in, in, in Isaiah 11 and 1 said a branch, a branch in Hebrew is, is in Hebrew it said Natser, N-E-T-Z-E-R, and it's abbreviated as N Z R. These letters are included in Nazareth. N A Z A R E T H. That go that same abbreviation. So then we go to two words. Read Isaiah eleven and one one more time for him. The book of Isaiah chapter eleven verse one. Come on. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Uh huh. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Uh, and that branch was. Uh, another way from saying a Nazarite. That's what that was. Matthew 2 and 23 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 23. Again, that word branch in Hebrew is spelled N-E-T-Z-E-R. Nazar is abbreviated as N-Z-R, which meant Nazarite. Come on. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Called what? Nazareth. Called what? Nazareth. I'm stupid. What? Nazareth. Oh, okay. Come on. That it might be fulfilled. That it might be what? Fulfilled. What's that word we've been fulfilled. looking at? Fulfilled. That's right. Which was spoken by the prophets 
He shall be called a Nazarene. And who called? Who spoke that thing? By the prophets. Then he said, "What?" He shall be called a Nazarene. That go your, they go your, your, the end of your fifth prophecy right there, man. So now let's go to prophecy number six. I'm gonna go prophecy for prophecy, which all the way up to the end, and show you with these scriptures what he fulfilled. Isaiah chapter forty, verse three. Come on. The book of Isaiah, uh -huh. chapter 40 and verse 3. Come on. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. What did it, what, read that again? The book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 3. Uh -huh. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. We know that to be the ear of the light and they journey from uh, Egypt all the way to the promised land. Come on. Prepare ye the way of our Lord. Prepare what? Prepare ye the way of our Lord. That's the way that he was paying us when he delivered us up out that thing. And then he took us through trials and tribulations, man. Forming that uh, more precious than gold. Come on. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Do what? Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Come on. He was talking about when they crossed the uh, 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 Red Sea, man. And then make straight. Straighten out all the crookedness, man. Because when we left, we were uh 600 and some thousand women and children, probably 1.3 million or something when we left that thing. The number two of them individuals crossed over to the promised land, man. Uh, 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 Joshua and, J and uh, Caleb, man, they, they, our folks were wicked, man. The most high weaved that thing out, though. Made it go straight and for, for, for our people, though. Um, now, let's look and see where it said the same thing over here in the New Testament, because we already know the fulfilling of, uh, of Isaiah 40 and 3. Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse 1. Through eight right there. The book of Matthew, chapter three, verses one through eight. I ain't gonna stop him too much, but I'm gonna let him just read through. Come on. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Oh, he was talking about who else too? Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Come on. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? What, what, what did John call them? <laughs> what he call them? O generation of vipers. He call them bouncers of snakes, man. Come on. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Come on. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. Uh huh. Now let's look at Luke chapter 3, verse 2. I'll tell you when to stop. We ain't going to read all the ones I got down. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 3. Verses starting off with verse two. Uh huh. Annas and Shalot. Annas and Cephas, being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Jordan was in the wilderness. What was he doing? Read that part again right there. Uh, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Come on. As it is written in the book of the words of Esaias, the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Crying well? In the wilderness. Crying well? In the wilderness. In the house. In the wilderness. Down the street. In the wilderness. Right the corner. In the wilderness. Come on. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Uh huh. Make his path straight. Make his what? Make his path straight. Saying the same thing, man. Come on. Every valley shall be filled. Okay, let's let's start right there. I didn't touch on enough for that. Let's jump over to John chapter one verse six now. What verse you read down to right there? By the way. Okay. Let's look at John chapter one verse six. John chapter one and verse six. John chapter 1 verse 6. Book of John chapter 1 verse 6. Come out. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Was what? Whose name was John. Oh, we got the understanding of who it was. Now read 19. Start at 19. The book of John chapter 1 verses 
Start verse 19. Uh-huh. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? Is that what? Art thou Elias? Are thou what? Art thou Elias? So they knew about reincarnation even back then, man. Come on. And he says, I am not. Because in the, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it said that you wouldn't know who you was in your latter times and where you're going. So a lot of our brethren that's here getting this true five stuff, we are people who are labored in this Old Testament and New Testament, living in the modern day of 2018, what they call it. Come on. Art thou that prophet? Or uh, who? Art thou that prophet? We are the present day old school prophets back again. Come on. And he answered, no. And he answered them what? And he answered no. Just like if they asked me if I was one of them people, I say I, I know because I presently don't know. Come on. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. Uh huh. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Crying well? In the wilderness. Crying well? In the wilderness. Come on. Make straight the way of the Lord. Do what with the way? Make straight the way of the Lord. Take the crooks out that thing and do what? Make straight the way of the Lord. Man, we can stop it right there, man. So that's the sixth prophecy right there. We're going we gonna to walk through that thing, you know what I'm saying? So now we're going to go on to prophecy number seven that Hamashiach is fulfilled. Isaiah chapter nine, verse 11. Come on. Verse 1, verse chapter 9, verse 1, come the on. book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 1. Come on. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. Uh-huh. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. Verse 14 through 16 now. We're going to go through these prophecies. This prophecy number seven. We're getting the back end of it now. We already got the old school showing you that what uh, 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 Yahweh shall fulfill. This is what he was saying when he said, I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And we're going to show you what he fulfilled, what he was talking about with the scriptures. Not what Christianity, your Reverend Pope Chop, Reverend uh, Womp Womp, uh, Deacon Chitlins, and, and, and those type of establishments have indoctrinated into our communities through the, the uh, uh, vast... Um, um, white supremacy system of what we know today as churches. The Bible calls it the synagogue of Satan. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Uh -huh. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them was set in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Light is what? Sprung up. That was Yahweh Shai that sprung up. But the scriptures tell you that he was the light. He was the life and the light. The life being that um, do the commandments and live. You remember that scripture? That's what he was the light to show us that thing, man. Um, that was the seventh prophecy. Let's go into prophecy number eight now. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse four. The book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse four. Bring that thing out. Surely he hath borne our griefs. He did what? Surely he hath borne our griefs. He took away that grief of getting stoned to death. Come on. And carried our sorrows. And carried all our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, uh -huh. smitten of God and afflicted. Now, let's get the back end of, in the New Testament, the end of that prophecy with being fulfilled. Matthew 8, uh, verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 17. Come on. That it might be fulfilled. That it might be what? That it might be fulfilled. What's that key word we've been looking for? Fulfilled. Fulfilled what? Which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, uh -huh. himself took our infirmities. And bear our sicknesses. That's that, that's right. And bear our sickness, uh, 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 our sins. That was Matthew eight seventeen. Mm -hmm. Now let's go into prophecy number nine. Prophecy number nine. Today I'm not. We don't have to do a whole bunch of breaking it down because I'm basically here to show you what he fulfilled. Not to really break down because I'm gonna wipe that that the rest of what. 
These people have been talking about, I'm going to wipe that out of your mind. I am here to destroy the church foundation and, and mindset of our people in those uh, buildings, man. Come out of her is what the scripture said. That means her holidays, her belief systems, her politics and laws. Because if you presently keep the laws of the Most High God, you'll fulfill all of this white man's laws and be in better than good standings. Uh, but when you fulfill the white man laws, man, you'll still be in sin, man. You best believe that. We well, pass being gay on gay. The Bible says against that. You see that right there? You will be at air. <laughs> that means you're getting your top knocked off when you come back. So prophecy nine is what we're presently going into. Isaiah chapter 58, verse four now. Come on. 53, verse four. The book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse four. Come on. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh -huh. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Right. With his what we healed? With his stripes, we are healed. Uh -huh. Let's get the back end of that thing and show you what uh, prophecy number 9 was fulfilled there. Come on. The book of Matthew. Chapter 11, verses 10 through 15. Come on. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, uh -huh. which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was which was for to come. Hold on, wait a minute. Who did the Bible just say John the Baptist was? And if ye will receive it, this is Elias. This is Elias. Come on. Which was for to come. Which was for what to come. So it was telling you that when Elijah died, that his spirit was going to come back again as John the Baptist. This is what y'all need to understand. We presently are the prophets or uh, 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 trying to wake up our people. I don't know who I am and I, I wish I did or some, some of who my brothers and stuff. That's why I say be careful how you treat people because you don't know when you might be entertaining angels, man. That's what the, you don't know. You don't know. Um, so now we have um, uh, 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 came through and showed you we're up to prophecy number nine now. Let's look at prophecy number 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 1. Behold my servant. Behold who? Behold my servant. Uh-huh. Whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Uh-huh. Now, let's get the back end of that in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 12, verse 17 through 21 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 17 through 21. Come out. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet. Spoken by who? Esaias the prophet. He spoke a whole bunch of these prophets. This let you know that the brother was powerful. So this lets you know that John was even woo. Ooh, he was smoking. Come on. Say, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Mm-hmm. A bruised reed shall not break, and smoking Flax shall, shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. In the who? And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Because he came and brought them in back into the fold, man. Because they had the did that divide and conquer way back then, man. But Yahweh Shai did not come before the lost sheep of the of tribe of Israel. That's who he came back for, man, to bring us all back together. When they said about that branch, he was bringing those two branches together, man. That's what he was doing. That's what he came for, man. So then, just then, we just got through with prophecy number 10. Prophecy number 10, we showing you what uh, 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 Yahweh uh, fulfilled when he was talking about through the scripture. 
not that he fulfill a, a way for you to be um, sinful as you want to be, then die and get to heaven. Man, that's a ludicrous way of thinking, man. So presently, you were saying that um, um, you could rape, rob, murder, steal, kill, all of this, and still get into heaven at the end of days. Man, that's ludicrous, bro. That's ludicrous. Yeah. Heaven would be just like here again. How is that going to work? When you figure out the answer to that, please contact me so I can laugh my butt off. Prophecy number 11 is what we finna expound on now. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. Come on. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Right. That We're going into prophecy number 11 now that he fulfilled. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13, verse, verse 14 through 16 now. The book of Matthew chapter 13, verses 14 through 16. Bring that thing out. Mm -hmm. Verse uh, 14 through 16, come on. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias. And who? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias. And the prophecy of Esaias. Man, this brother, uh, uh, Elias, man, he was powerful. So that's why when he came back as John in the in the womb, he was already aware of things that was under the spirit was so strong on him, even as a baby, infant child, before he was even born. Come on. Which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, uh -huh. and shall not perceive. Uh -huh. For this people's heart is wax gross. Is wax what? Is wax gross. Man, these folks is wicked, man. Come on. And their ears are dull of hearing. They don't want to hear nothing this Bible got to say. The same way in 2018, they have they got dull ears. You can break this scripture down a uh, uh, precept upon precept where a baby can digest that thing, and these grown individuals will sit there and be looking like the uh what did you just say? Come on. <laughs> and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. Uh -huh. and should be converted and I should heal them. But bless are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Bless all my brothers, man, who we didn't presently been able to decipher and see what's going on with these scriptures. And we trying to reach uh, uh, the lost tribe of, uh, of our people scattered to the four corners, man. Because this is presently our profession, man, given to us uh, 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 from the most high through the spirit, man. This is what we came to do, man. Set the record straight, man. These are the last days. Wake up. Come out of America and all of the nostrosities, man, that they are teaching us, man. Because if you don't, man, you will be destroyed. Now, that was prophecy number 11. Let's, get, let's start off with prophecy number 12. Now, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. The book of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Bring that thing out. Wherefore the Lord said. Wherefore who? Wherefore the Lord said. Yeah, how? For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth uh -huh. and with their lips Come on. do honor me. They do what? Do honor me. What do they do? Do honor me. Oh man, I go to church there a Sunday and Wednesday and revivals too. I sing in the choir. I pay my tithes. Come on. But have removed their heart far from me. He ain't gonna matter if I eat this pig right here and stuff. You know, he told Peter he bought it, and everything is clean and shrimp and all. I eat that too. Come on. And their fear toward me. And they what? And their fear toward me. Been what? Is taught by the precept of men. The precept your pastor that told you to disrespect the most high Yahweh, man. That's what he done did to you, man. He, he'll leave about the church and sister, uh, sister Dum Dum then bought the man a plate of pork chops. How that working, man? This man up here supposed to be preaching the truth, man. He ain't bought out none of the law. The only law he done bought out of some time, and that ain't even right. <laughs> but it's to his own pleasing, his own understanding. To, 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 to and, and every Sunday when you walk in that thing, you got to know that them folks is asking you, what's in your pocket? That ain't right. According to the scripture, man. This They, they whack us always, man. When the most high come, man, he knocking them folks top off, man. And they got to know that thing. Understand that thing, man. Now, now, we just got through prophecy number 11, man. Let's look at prophecy. No, prophecy number 12. 
The, oh, we going to the back end. Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 15, verse 7 through 9 now. Come the, on. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 through 9. Bring that thing out. Ye hypocrites. Ye who? Ye hypocrites. You who? Ye hypocrites. Most of the time when he say the hypocrites, you know that don't go well for the person he's talking about. You are a sinner what he's talking about. You playing two different roles. Pastor Poe Chop be playing like he righteous and everything, bro. Your name at the top of the list when it comes to sin. Come on. <laughs> so I Ye hypocrites. Ye who? Ye hypocrites. Pastor Wont Wont and all of his congregations. Come on. Well did Isaiah's prophecy of you say, uh -huh. this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. Man, them folks love to come out their mouth and talk like yeah, they say all type of praise, man. But we ain't even supposed to give nobody praise. That's why we don't supposed to celebrate birthdays, Israel. But I said a whole bunch of y'all folks that so-called woke up. Man, y'all need to drop the distraction. Man, you is not woke up. You in a deeper slumber than the folks that call themselves woke up, man. Man, you calling other people to believe that same uh, belief system, man. You leading them people to hell with gasoline draws on. And you the uh and you at the front of that thing the uh what they call him with the baton in his hand <laughs> you must the, the drum major man leading them folks straight on down the hill man you need to stop that stupid mess jump man please stop that jump man and re and re and re uh, evaluate yourself, man, and come back to what this Bible says and get off your own understanding, man. Because every time y'all call yourself understanding something, somebody end up dead, man. <laughs> y'all ain't got that through your noodles yet, man. Where we just at now? We're reading the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 7 through 9. Start at the top again. Ye hypocrites, well did a science prophecy of you say. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, uh -huh. and honoreth me with their lips, Yeah, but their heart is far from me. Man, they ain't thought about the Most High. Man, they talk that junk right there, but then when you put them on the scale talking about how close they is to righteousness, man, they ain't even on the chart no more, them folks. It done fell off the chart, man. You, you look at, where did they go? I was just looking for him. He was right here, man. Them folks so far and seeing, man, they don't even know what the top look like. Please stay away from these type of folks, man. They contradict themselves. They thoughts contradict everything that this Bible talks about. But yet, they, and, and, and these are the most dangerous type because they'll swear upon on, on top of swear that I'm righteous. You can't prove to me nothing. You bring out the scripture that proved that they sent it. The first thing they holler is, well, Jesus fulfilled the law. That's what I'm doing this lesson for today. To bust your butt down the middle. You ain't going to be able to run on top of that line no more. You can wipe all that stuff off the list, man. We finna kill that doctrine. Uh, 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 now come we on. just, come on. Verse 9. But in vain they do worship me. Uh-huh. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Because my plan is to make it where you ain't got nowhere to run in Christianity, man. I'm finna wipe the flows, corners, clean all that stuff up. When you talking about you gonna run over here, you gonna get batooned in the face. When you talking about you gonna run over there, you gonna get buffed in the face. It ain't gonna be nowhere else left. And I'm trying to save my people from getting their top knocked off by the uh, Yahweh, man, because he coming back to slay y'all, man. That's, I, and this is my job, man. I'm trying to wake y'all up, man. But in the process, says of trying to wake y'all up. Our people love to run from base to base to base. They, it's supposed to be a game where you run around the bases. These crooked bastards will run around the base and then re, and run backwards. They, they, they're cheating every aspect of what cheating is, man. They done bought out all the secrets. Man, it ain't nothing that's hid, but guess what? I'm going to cover all them corners and bases where you ain't going to have nowhere to run back to, man. I'm going to leave you exposed to not the way of the truth, man. Well, either you're going to get killed in your sin, or you're going to repent and come back over here, man, because it ain't going to be no way for you to do all this line. I'm going to kill that stuff. After today, and, and this is my mark on every one of these posts with me and my brothers. Real eyes, recognize real eyes. Bookable, we see you. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. The book of Zechariah. Right. This is the 13th prophecy, which we are going into now, and we're going to cover. Come on. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9. Come on. Rejoice greatly. Do oh, what? Rejoice greatly. Come on. O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass. And upon a coat, the form of an ass. Well, hold on, wait a minute. We'll go back until they said how he was going to come. And have he said, lowly and riding upon an ass. What was he riding? Riding upon an ass. He was riding on that donkey, man, when he came in. These are the prophecies being fulfilled over and over again. Come on. And upon a coat, the form of an ass. Uh-huh. Now let's get the back end of that thing in the New Testament, man. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1, 2 through 3. Showing you where it was fulfilled. That come on. The book of Matthew, 
chapter 21, verses 1 through 3. Uh huh. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a coat with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. Straight away he gonna send them. See, the, 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 the Bible keeps saying the same thing. Again, prophecy number 13, fulfilled, fulfilled. So when these clowns and people that you run into talking about, Oh, uh, uh, after you done bust them down the middle, nailed them to the wall where they presently at, the first thing they love to run to, uh, Jesus died and fulfilled all that. You're going to be able to kill these folks with that doctrine. They're not going to be able to keep repeating this thing, man. That's my mission. We're going to kill that thing. Now let's go into prophecy number 14. Show you what Mark chapter 14, verse 50. The book of Mark chapter 14 and verse 50, uh -huh. and they all forsook him. And they did what? And they all forsook him. Come on. And fled. And what they did? And fled. Oh, man, they got him. <laughs> and they left the most high, man. They left, they left your house shot standing there, man, with them folks. Man, you, it's like when you're standing on the block with your partners, man. We don't all be them talking to the males right now. And if y'all, it's some real females out there in Israel, too. They still necked and walked the wild, all of them titles, too. But y'all know what it been standing like that with your homeboy. They pull up, whoop, whoop, and grab your homeboy. Everybody else left his butt down. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to stand there and help nothing, man. Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. Come on. But all this was done, uh -huh. that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. That all of this was done, why? That the scriptures of the prophet might be fulfilled. This is why they fled and left him, that the scriptures might be what? Fulfilled. What? Fulfilled. What? Fulfilled. What's today's lesson? Fulfilled what? That's what we came here to do, and the scripture said what? That this what? But, this, but all this was done that the scripture of the prophets might be fulfilled. This is what had to go on, man, because the Most High spoke that thing at the beginning of creation. And he said, ain't none of my word turned to me void. So well, believe me, when he spoke something, it's going to come to bad, whether you like it or not. Uh, you presently might wake up saying, oh, I'm going to do so and so and so. So you know the Most High laughing at that thing? Man, because you ain't doing what you want to do. You doing what he said you're going to do, man. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. What did they do? Forsook him and fled. They, they fled, man. This is prophecy, man. Now let's go on to uh, prophecy number 15. Out of this Bible showing you again, every verse I'm going to state that thing. What the Hawashi fulfilled. It was not our sins on the, uh, 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 and he didn't die on the cross. He died on the stake, man. That's why they labeled it tree in the Old Testament and the other, and he did not die on the cross. That was a way for them to invent um, and promote to Maraz and the cross. That's what, what they did, man. They, they, they got our people sleep in the mindset because they don't read precept upon precept and know how to break this Bible down properly. They listen to, to your pastors and, and he working for money, man. That's all he go do. Man. Hey, bring me that cow machine. His fingers done got tired and blistered in that thing, man. He didn't got all your money, man. Then at the, end of the, at the end of the year, man, you asking for some help with the bills or something. Granny say, I've been paying tithes here at the church for 50 years and I'm $50 short. I had to get a new prescription. Granny lights done got cut off behind that thing, man. The pastor ain't starting to tell, man. Man, these niggas is wicked as uh, the days is long, man. We need to stop promoting them folks, man. What prophecy we on? Verse uh, uh, Zechariah 11, um, verse 12 and 13. Now, come on. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. We're going to break down that foundation of Christianity. Come on. And I said unto them, if ye think good, give me my price. Uh -huh. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized out of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Uh huh. Now let's get the backside of that property in the New Testament, man. Matthew chapter 27, verse, um, verse 9. Come on. The book of Matthew. Chapter 27 and verse 9. Uh huh. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet. Uh huh. Saying, saying what? And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was value, whom they of the children of Israel did value. 
Yeah, read verse 10. Verse 10. Uh -huh. And gave them for the potter's field. And gave it to who? And gave them for the potter's field. Come on. As the Lord appointed me. That's what do we get in these prophecies over and over. We get coming to a conclusion and think, I am not going to leave Christians nowhere to run. They are going to they gonna, they gonna cross over into this uh, Israelite underbelief system or they're going to die. They, and, when, and when they don't cross over, that's when I tell them, man, I'll be, I hope you got your barbecue sauce. <laughs> Keep your son in your car just in case the one in your pocket you sit on it and bust. Because you're going to need that thing, man. Because you're going to need to be a good solo smell in his nose on Judgment Day. Keep that thing with you at all times. So now we just killed prophecy number 15. Let's look at prophecy number 16. Isaiah 53, verse 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 7. Come on. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He, he read it from the top again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53 and verse 7. Uh -huh. He was oppressed. He was what? He was oppressed. Come on. And he was afflicted. He was afflicted for us, man. Come on. Yet he opened not his mouth. He ain't saying a word, man. He ain't had nothing to say, man. Shoot, come on. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He ain't said a mumbling word, brothers and sisters. He ain't had nothing to say, man. And that, and that's based on the scriptures right there. Uh, what we was, Isaiah, let's go to Matthew 27, verse 12 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 27 and verse 12. Come on. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. When they sit there and ask him something, he ain't had a moment of word to say, man. We keep on getting the edification of what these scriptures say, man. Christianity ain't going to have a corner to run in under to, man. Take the rugs up off the floor so they can't jump up under them things neither, man. <laughs> Now, let we just got through with uh, prophecy number 16. Let's touch on uh, prophecy number 17 now. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 14. Uh huh. I will be his father. Uh, he said, What? I will be his father. The most I said, What? I will be his father. What did Yahweh say? I will be his father. Come on. And he shall be my son. Three. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. With the rod of what? With the rod of men. Come on. And with the stripes of the children of men. Uh-huh. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 through 32 now. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 through 32. Come on. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall. They took him well? Into the common hall. Come on. And gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Uh-huh. And they stripped him. And they did what? And they stripped him. Come on. And put on him a scarlet robe. Come on. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. Come on. And they reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. What did they call him? Hail, King of the Jews. And that wasn't no lie because he was from the blood lineage of, uh, 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 of David. If they had not been under oppression, he would have been on the throne. But it was a, a lot of people want to bring up their prophecy. Uh, 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 Jero Kemmel, however you pronounce the brother's name, our forefather. But. Hamashiach did not sit on the throne. So that prophecy right there is erased right there because Jesus didn't presently sit on that throne during his time here. So that right there, they try to uh, say that Joseph is not the father of him. I'm sorry, Israel. Y'all need to reevaluate and see what these scriptures gonna, gonna say about that thing. I'm gonna bring out a lesson about that in a week or two, man. I, I've been getting requests on that thing quite frequently. And I'm gonna bring out <laughs> precept upon precept to prove to everybody that Joseph is the father. Come on. And they spit upon him and took the reed uh -huh. and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. So that, and that's another way. You see how they inverted that cross in there when he was not the, uh, crucified on the cross, man. He was crucified on the tree, man. They uh, shave all the limbs off of it. It's other than to what we would call it today would be a stake. In other words, just a straight up and down pole, what have you. His hands was like this, you know what I'm saying? And his feet was the same way on the bottom. And, um... That's, that's, what the, that's what all my studies have indicated, man. It, it was no cross, man. That's this idolatry um, um, 
Roman Catholic Church doctrine and inserted that thing to keep us in the midst of idolatry because they know that our people are some buffoons on the low and everybody walk around because they ain't really thought about it. If your brother was hung on a cross, why would you wear a cross next week or the year after to, 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 to say, you know, give him recognition of that thing when your brother was crucified? Crucif crucified means executed. Execute is what crucifixion is, an execution. So why would you wear a cross around your neck saying it symbolizes, you know, Jesus Christ? Man, we are so retarded in our mindset. We don't give two. We don't do any thinking. Our people just don't really think. That's what we've been trained not to think here in this captivity, man, that we presently are, are living in, man. And the things that we do, man, are outside the box. But the first thing you get when you try to when you try to correct one of them, what would you tell me? You gotta fight. You get shot. <laughs> If you live, man, you, you just learn the hard lesson, man. Don't deal with these people, man. Our people are, 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 are lost in the sauce and don't even know the flavor it is. So what we was on 16, that was uh, 27 and 12. We on prophecy. We on prophecy. Yeah, we on prophecy. 18 now. Um, Psalms 22, verse 16 through 18 now. The book of Psalms, chapter 22. Verses 16 through 18. Come on. For dogs have compassed me. What did the most I call the other nation? For dogs have compassed me. That was the people of the that they was hollering for him to uh, uh um um to be crucified. <laughs> and the Roman Catholic Church, what did he call the For, for dogs have compassed me. What did he call the Romans? For dogs have compassed me. See that lined up with Joe when he said that they ain't fit to be uh, tied up with my dogs. What did the most I call Roman again? For dogs have compassed bro, me. Bro, they was thinking dogs, man. Come on. The assembly of the wicked <laughs> have enclosed me. Come they on. They pierce my hands and my feet. And what? They pierce my hands and my feet. Come on. I may tell all my bones. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They ain't told that story now. One of the movies that they put out, man, they done beat our brother so bad, man, his bones. He said, what? I may tell all my bones. I can tell my bones. They look and stare upon me. His bones were staring yeah. him in the face, man. They done beat the meat all the way down off of, the, off of his skeleton, man. He could look through and see his bones, people. They ain't told that now in one of these stories, man. He was more and more than anybody they can ever be. It can't nobody compare to what they did to our brother from the tribe of Judah, man. Come on. They part my garments among them. They did what? They part my garments among them. Come on. And cast lots upon my vesture. They bet it for his garments, man. So they did. that's the proof and the truth, man, that our brother wasn't no raggedy and andy like these uh, 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 Esau is, man. You know, they, they they the base of for real, man. But they done got reduced us to the base, man. And it's sad the predicament that we've been put in, but we spreading on our way back to claim this kingdom. All praise to the Most High. We gonna get that thing, too. Um... We just covered over, um, yeah, that's what we think. Yeah, we the back end of, of prophecy 18 now. Matthew chapter 27, verse 35 through 37 now. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verses 35 through 37. Come on. And they crucified him. And they did what? And they crucified him. They executed our uh, our brethren, come on, and parted his garments, and they did what? And parted his garments, read, casting lots, casting lots, do what? Casting lots, doing what? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Uh huh. They parted my garments among them. Uh huh. And upon my vesture did they cast lots. They was betting over who was gonna get the brother's clothes, man. Come on. And sitting down, mm -hmm. they washed him there and set up over his head the accusation written. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Because he was from the blood lineage of David, man. If Roman wouldn't have us on the floor, he would present and had to, had to claim the throne. That was his right for a uh, uh, place. He couldn't get around it. Joseph was from the blood lineage of David. Matthew chapter 1 through up to 16, 18. It tells you that, man. But our people reject open knowledge, man. And it's so simple in front of our face, man. It's so simple in front of our face, man. We got to get that thing, man. Um, so now we just went through prophecy number 18. So again, they parted and cast lots. They were betting for his clothes. So that is the truth that our brother was not a bum with a lot of people who are outside atheists. Oh, Jesus Christ was a bum. Man, y'all niggas is dumb. I show you at this Bible, he had a house. The brother was, had, must have had sharp clothes for them. Niggas. Who wants to? They would have said, I don't want that. You can take it. No, they was casting lots for it. You ain't finna take that right there. No, no, no. We gonna bet for it. Come on. Ah, ah. 
Like, come on, nobody move when this thing hit seven or something me. See, that's what they was doing, mm -hmm. man, at the base of, of him when he was being crucified, man. But nobody wants to bring in or expound on that part of the scriptures, man. Our brother was not no no bum. You know, even even he was going around preaching the word and he was in a in a in a in a highly uh manner here on the mercy. He was no bum again, he was just no bum. Get that through your thick skulls, man. Uh, we we ain't no bums, but we have been reduced to fall for all this stuff right here in America right now, the system. They playing tricks on us, man. America's the biggest illusion they ever set up, man. And 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 presently, man, we keep that ball rolling. If we come out of that thing, for instance, if we was to keep the Sabbath day laws. We would crumble this nation's economy. They would have to submit to whatever we wanted them to do. They would come to somebody else or one leader or whoever, man, and ask well, what we got to do to keep y'all from doing this or what, what kind of compromise that we need to do. Or it would kick off the cracking of the sky or, or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? This is where we stand in today. So now we have went through 18 fulfillments of prophecy from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Let's continue on. Prophecy number 18, uh, 19 now. Um, Isaiah 53, verse 2 through 5. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 2 through 5. Come on. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Uh-huh. And as a root out of a dry ground. Right. He have no form nor comeliness. He had what? He have no form. The most high one walked all up when you look at him, you say, dang. And women will say, oh my goodness, he's so. Come on. Nor comeliness. He wasn't a beautiful man is what the Bible just telling you from. Come on. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Ain't nobody who's seen the most high said, dang, I want to be him. Hey, look at him. He was just another common old brother. He didn't come here looking like, oh, how you would think. But the scriptures tell you how the brother was here. He was just a plain old Jane, man. Come on. He is despised and rejected of men. He was what? He is despised and rejected of men. And that's why we despise and rejected by the day's present system. Because he said the same thing that I go through, y'all going to go through read. A man of sorrow. Come on. He acquainted with grief. He acquainted with what? With grief. My friend is sorrow, man. I always been on the floor, man. Come on. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. And we, and if people hide their face from me, man, because they hate to see this truth and understand that I crush their ego system with these scriptures, man. Come on. Surely he has borne our griefs. He did what when he got up on that on that stage? Surely. He have borne our grief. Because when he got up on that thing, they said surely because it was a big earthquake. The 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 the, the, the um the curtain got rent in the temple and stuff. And they knew that this was the most high. They turned around and said, Surely this was the Son of God. But it was too late for all that at that time. Come on. And carried our sorrow. Come on. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smiting of God and afflicted. Come on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh-huh. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Right. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. I'm going to break this Bible down where a baby can understand that thing, man. At the end of the day, man, Christianity will die. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. Uh-huh. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree. What did they say about him? His body shall not remain all night upon the tree. I thought it was a cross. What did the Bible say? His body shall not remain all night upon the tree. I'm going to precept this Bible down, man, and wipe away all foolishness. Come on. But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. They're going to do what with the body? But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. Come on. For he that is hanged is a curse of God. What did they do? For he that is hanged is a curse of God. He wasn't hung around his neck like they did us over here in America. They switched the game up a little bit, but he was still hanged by his hands and his feet. Come on. That thy land be not defiled, uh -huh. which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go back and say what they did. If they left him up on that, read that again. That they land. Go back that to, thy land. Go back to that precept right before that so they get the full understanding. For for he that is hanged is a curse of God. Because he that is hanged is a curse of God. So this is what the curse that America finna get right here. Come on. 
that thy land be not defiled. Because they land is defiled because they done left plenty of our brothers and sisters hung on these trees around here. That's why America must be destroyed, man. And that time is very near, man. Y'all need to come out of her and deliver thy soul. You ain't got to get no plane or bus ticket talking about you're going to go to Canada or South America or one of these islands or get up in the plane. You're not going to escape God's judgment. Deliver thy soul. That's the only way. Get these laws, statutes, commandments in your life or die. Perish here in America, man. Come on. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee for inheritance. Because they they he gonna this is our inheritance, everything. Um Zechariah chapter twelve, verse ten through fourteen now. <clears throat> the book of Zechariah, chapter twelve, verses ten through fourteen. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The spirit of grace and of supplications. This is how much she got. Come on. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Who they what? Whom they have pierced. Now he's telling you that this was a Yahweh shot. Come on. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. Uh huh. They shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And the people who knew him, this is how they lamented over him. Come on. In that day, there shall be a great morning in Jerusalem, uh -huh. as the morning of Hidarimon in the valley of Megadon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shemel apart, and their wives apart. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Okay, come on. All the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. Shalaki, excuse me, everybody. Deuteronomy now, chapter 18 and verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 15. Come on. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. What did the Most High say? The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, uh -huh. of thy brethren, of who? Of thy brethren, uh -huh. like unto me. Like unto who? Like unto me. Like a regular human. He telling you that it wasn't such thing as an immaculate birth, man. He said, like unto me. So he wouldn't be like anybody here on the face of the earth if he came straight from the most high. That, that, that's ludicrous what we need to do, man. We need to evaluate these scriptures better. Come on. Like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Unto him, like unto me, you shall hawk in the same way. Um, now where we at? That was a Deuteronomy 18. Mm -hmm. Now Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 27, verse 38 through 59. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verses 38 through 59. Come on. Then were there two thieves crucified with him. This is the days when they had him up on that, on that stake in that tree. They was crucifying him. They was what? Then was there two thieves crucified with him. Uh -huh. One on the right hand. One on the right hand. And another on the left. And one on the left hand. Come and, on. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. Well, some of them were shaking their head, man. You know how they do, man. They pass by the scriptures. Say, they pass by and shake their head. They did that then. They do it in 2018. Come on. And saying, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the son of God, Come down from the cross. Scornfuls, mocking the Most High, the, the, the Son of the Most High. We all are children of the Most High. That's what we need to understand. It ain't no delivery in between the next brother and me as we in this truth, man. We all are the children of the Most High. Get that through your noodles, man. Understand that thing. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking him. And who else mocked him? Likewise, <laughs> also the chief priest mocking him. Yeah, Pastor Pope Chop right there. It ain't twicked. He was mocking him too. Come on. With the scribes and elders said. And that went to deacons and all them too. And they was doing what? With the scribes and elders said. What they said? He saved others. Himself he cannot save. They mocking the uh, uh, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach. They mocking him to his face. Come on. If he be the king of Israel. If he be what? The king of Israel. See why they keep on saying if he be the king of Israel? Because they know something that we presently ain't knowing right here in 2018. Come on. Let him now come down from the cross. Scorning him. Come on. And we will believe him. And then if he pull off a miracle, and, and, and we'll believe him then. That's why he didn't do that thing. Because it ain't for him to, to overwhelmly uh, 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 get 
get your understanding, man, when everything he do, man, is very calm and, and on the bottom, man. That's how he want you to come in, man. Come on. He trusted in God. He did what? He trusted in God. That's what we supposed to do right now in 2018. Get these scriptures, man, and trust in the most high. You how about him? Come on. Let him deliver him now. Uh-huh. If he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. He said what? I am the son of God. And he wasn't wrong for that because we all are the sons of God. Come on. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Uh-huh. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. From the what? From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. From the sixth hour, that was the sixth hour of daylight. Come on. Until the ninth hour. Until the ninth hour, that was a, 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 a farther end to that day. So it had been dark for three hours is what the Bible said. We know that to the only time that it was daytime and... And uh, um, we get an eclipse. Uh, it's an eclipse. That's what I'm getting to. That was an eclipse that was going on on the day that he was uh, 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 crucified. Come on. Read from uh, the 12th hour again. From the 6th hour, there was darkness. Uh, on the 6th hour, I mentioned like it. Come on. Over, unto, over all the land until the ninth hour. So it was a three-hour eclipse, just like the one we got <clears throat> August. The 21st of 2017. That one lasts three hours and a little bit of change. Me and the brother sat out in my front yard and we watched that thing. Come on. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. What did he say? Say, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabbatian. Uh-huh. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Come on. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, this man calleth for Elias. Come on. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him a drink. Come on. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Uh-huh, dirty bastards, come on. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. He did what? Yielded up the ghost. I thought they killed him. What he did? Yielded up the ghost. Y'all ain't killed nothing, man. He yielded up his spirit, man. Y'all ain't killed the most high son, man. Y'all ain't killed uh, uh, Hamaki, Yahweh Shai. Y'all didn't kill him. He gave up his ghost, man. You understand that thing, man. That's what the scriptures tell you, man. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. And if we did, the veil of the temple was what? The veil of the temple was rent in vain. And see, they, it was no way that a man could have did it because the rent, it was so high way up in the top. It was tore from the top down, not from the bottom up. That's how me and him could grab it and run apart and split it all the way to the top. But this one was tore from the top down, letting you know that a higher power had did that thing. The most high had did it. Come on. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain uh -huh. from the top to the bottom. From where? From the top to the bottom. There wasn't no way for them to get up there and do that thing in the midst of an earthquake like that, man. They weren't climbing up there. Just letting you know that whoever did it came from up that way. Come on. And the earth did quake. And it did what? And the earth did quake. And it quaked at that time, just like the earthquake that's coming that we finna experience here. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be rocked to and fro, and it ain't gonna be in the same spot. Come on. Uh and the graves were open. Oh, so I, and the rocks rent. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the grave after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. What did they say about him then? Truly, this was the Son of God. No, he was some, uh, uh, I would say he was just a, a prophet. Truly, this was the Son of God. They got they, they got the thing twisted then, but it was too late. Their hands was dirty up to their elbows then. It was too late to take back all that stuff that you had to say. Uh, uh, that was it right there? Uh -uh. Come on. Verse 55. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. Uh, among which was Mary Magdalene, Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, uh -huh. and the mother of Zebedee's children. Uh -huh. When the evil was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also had him, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. Right. He went to Pilate. And begged the body of Jesus. So this was another follower of Hamashiach when he was do, doing his, you know, his his, his his ministries. Come on. 
Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. He did what? Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. Because they, the prophecy was that he was going to not stay up on there for another day. That they was going to bury him. Come on. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Uh-huh. Now, that was the end, the back part of, uh, of, of um, 19. Prophecy number 19 fulfilled. Uh, now, let's look at prophecy number 20. Psalms, chapter 16, verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 16, verse 10. Uh-huh. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. They say, what about Yahweh Shai? For thou will not leave my soul in hell. He told uh, Yahweh, thou will not leave my soul in hell. Come on. Neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. They, his body was not even going to start to corruption because, you know, after three after three days, the body starts to tear down or... Uh, uh, uh. Um, turning back into the dust of the earth from which it came from. Um, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10 now. The book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. Uh-huh. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Uh-huh. Um, now, Matthews, let's get that. Matthews chapter 27, start at 60. When you get to 60 and 62, let me know. 62? Mm -hmm. Stop at 62. Mm -hmm. Matthews chapter 27, verse 60 through 62. The book of Matthew chapter 27. Verses 60 through 62. Come on, bring that thing. And laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and hewn, departed. The word hewn means to carve out of the rock. So they took like a, a rock incline, the base of a mountain or what have you, and they carved it out. That was the word hewn mean to carve out of the, 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 the part of the mountain, the side of the mountain. Come on. And there was Mary Magdalene. And the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. What verse did? That was sixty-two. That was sixty-two right there. So now we're gonna we're gonna um that was the end of the twentieth prophecy being fulfilled right there. So again, we're gonna read this again. Um X. Chapter 3, verse 18. Bring that thing out for him, Op. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. Start at the top again. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. But those things. Those things being the prophecies that was talked about in the Old Testament. Come on. Which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. Elijah's, uh, 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 um. He, uh, uh, he, uh, um, Moses and all the other uh, uh, forefathers from in the past. Come on. That Christ should suffer through the prophets. Come on. He has so fulfilled. He has so fulfilled. Luke chapter 24 verse 44 now. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 44. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, Uh-huh. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. All what? All things must be fulfilled. Come on. Which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He just told you the places where they were. Now give me Matthew 5 and 17 one more time. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Uh-huh. Think not. Think what? Think not. Think what? Think not. Think not. Think not. That I am come to destroy the law. I did not come to destroy the law. Is what Yahweh said. Say, come out. Or the prophet. Or what the prophet said about me. Come out. I am not come to destroy. I didn't come to what? I am not come to destroy. What? But to fulfill. I did not come what? I am not come to destroy. Read it from the top again. But the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the uh -huh. law. Or the prophets. 
I am not come to destroy, uh -huh. but to fulfill. So now we went through the prophecies. It was 20 of them I just gave you and showed you what he fulfilled. Thus said these are uh, the Bible, man, the most high, through these scriptures, man. So now we are cutting out the corners, the side exits, the windows. We breaking them up, man. Christians will have nowhere to run dealing with your brother right here, your high, uh, 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 high MI, man. I am not leaving open uh, windows and doors for these folks to, to, to try to exit on with. I am going to kill they believe system rock they noodles man you gonna submit to what does said the most high because that is what i'm coming with or die presently get you some barbecue sauce if you don't want to rock with what this bible saying because you're gonna need that thing man um so now we have went through the scriptures today and showed you what it feel and now i'm gonna show you a little bonus something of what's going on right here now um it's funny how this year the prophecies and the crucifixion of yahweh um, lines up perfectly with what it did in ancient days. So now start at verse 62. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 62. Read. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation. Stop. The day that he was crucified, um, I left my calendar in the house. We're going to have to visualize this thing now. The 14th this year uh, was on uh, March. <laughs> So they had the Passover on uh, March the 14th at evening. That night of the 14th is when they had and broke bread and drunk the wine. That Thursday, what we know to be that Thursday, which actually is the same day in a Hebrew day because it's from evening to evening. That was the same day. So on the day of Passover, he was they broke bread and the same day he was crucified. So that being the day that they was talking about right there, he said, what now? Now, the next day, that followed the day of preparation. Stop. The day of preparation followed that next day. And, um, because that, that evening of the, um, the 14th at evening started the Israel, the Hebrew day. And it expired the following day, um, which was Wednesday at evening, Thursday at evening. Thursday at evening to Friday evening was the day of preparation. So when he was talking about right here, he said the day out, read what he said. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation. The day that followed the day of preparation is what, Israel? The Sabbath day. The Sabbath day. We know that as the Sabbath day. Read. The chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Came together, uh -huh, come on. Saying, sir, we remember that, we remember that, that deceiver said, while he was yet alive. After three days, I will rise again. Uh -huh. Command, therefore, that deception will be made sure until the third day. Uh -huh. Let his disciples come by night and steal him away. So what they were saying was they could remember that the, 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 the prophecy had been stated and uh, other brothers and sisters, they heard moment and overheard this, that he was going to rise in three days. So they said to prevent this from happening, they were going to stand watch at the tomb site of Yahweh Come on. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. And that's what they was going to do. They were saying that the, the, they was going to come and steal the body away. And that they, uh, 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 they was going to say, look, he ain't in there. He did rose. I told you he was real. Come on. And say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. So the last going to be worse than the first because he did all this. Now he going to get real edification, even more edification in his doubt because they going to turn around and say, he must have been real, man. Come on. Pilate said unto them, ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as ye can. Go and watch that thing. Stand guard at the tomb and make sure that they don't do, uh, 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 do this thing. Come on. So they went and made exceptionally sure Sealing the stone and setting a watch. Go ahead, read. Chapter 28. In the end of the Sabbath. Verse 28, what? Chapter 20, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, stone, verse 1. Uh huh. In the end of the Sabbath. At the end of what? Of the Sabbath. At the end of what? Of the Sabbath. So I just showed you the day that he was, he just, uh, uh, these days are aligning up exactly the same way they did when he was there. What I'm telling y'all is that Yahweh was crucified on a Thursday afternoon, which was the same Israelite day from at the 14th at evening started the Passover, and he was crucified. These days are laying in exact uh, 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 alignment of what it did when the time when he was crucified this year. 
It's a blood moon on the 31st of this month. We need to pay attention. These years of prophecy is being fulfilled. These years are marked. We need to pay attention and, and, and be sure that we understand what's going on. That's why my spirit told me, no, 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 no. Bring that thing out and show our people what's going on because we are keeping the same time frame. It ain't like other times we keep the Passover. It was on a Monday and then, 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 then. this is the exact time frame. Read that 28 one again. The book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 1. Uh -huh. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene, Magdalene and the other Mary to see the, 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 the yes. sepulchre. Now, go to 62. Read 62 again for me. The book of Matthew, uh -huh. chapter 27, verse 62. Read. Now, the next day that followed the day of the preparation. Now, we got that the day of Passover had been failed. I just explained how the day of Passover failed Wednesday afternoon to Thursday afternoon. Uh, 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 Thursday afternoon started the day of preparation until Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon started what we said, what? The day after the day of preparation. So it was the Sabbath day. Read. Read 62 again so they can get it now. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 62. Uh-huh. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Jump down to 28 and 1 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath. In the end of what? Of the Sabbath. This is the beginning of the first day of the week. As it began to dawn. Now he's telling you what time it was because the sun was coming up. So he rose at this time frame, but we don't know exactly when. But when they got there, come on. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. What day of the week it was? The first day of the week. They called it Sunday. Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the, the sepulchre. Uh-huh. That's, that's all we need to get because we don't want to uh, uh, identify the first day of the week. And we just expound on that thing. So, again, Israel, this year's Passover, unleavened bread and stuff, was is falling exactly how it did in the time of Yahweh Hamashiach. And it's important that we understand that thing. Again, uh, 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 today we went through, last week we went over all the commandments done away with, we... we we um we killed that doctrine that he died for your sins. Um, um we touched on a few verses that killed that thing. Um one of them being in um um I'll bring it out now. One of them being Psalms 49. Get that for me, Psalms 49. Psalm 49 and verse verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 7. Come on. None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. So this is what I brought out last week right here. This kills that he died from your sins. Read it one more time. I'll slow it down for me. The book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 7. Read. None of them can by any means redeem his brother. Can, so Hamashiach was our brother. Said that he can't redeem his brother. He couldn't redeem us through his acts. Come on. Nor give to God a ransom for him or give a rent his blood could not be ransomed off for our sins could not be ransomed off for our sins why not you might say give me Jeremiah 31 and verse 30 Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 30 just to touch on what it was last week and then we came here today to show you because the Christianity try to run through that loophole oh but the scriptures say to fulfill I'm, I just killed that thing if y'all go back and watch this video come on the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 30. Come on. But everyone shall die for his own iniquities. Every man that eateth the sour grapes. Every man that committed the sin. His teeth shall be set on edge. His teeth going to be set on edge, man, until he repent, confess and repent, and come back in the fold of keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. We appreciate y'all tuning in with us today, man. Um, share, like, comment, um, tell a loved one. Share this truth with our people, man, because the time is short, man. We don't have as long as we have had uh, in this truth, man. The reason we waking up and, and going, coming out with these scriptures and uh, uh, knocking down all of these uh, man-made tradition days is because we, we, we really are concerned about our people. We really have a die-hard discern and love for our people, man. Um, again, we appreciate y'all watching uh, with Judah Knights of Israel from the Lion's Den. And with that right there, we say uh, shalom. Shalom.